Imagine being in an interview and your interviewer asks, can you automate the Amazon website for me? That's right, it happens. In this series, we will mimic a real interview setup, we'll cover some common automation challenges, and together we'll tackle them head on. I've faced this situation countless times in interviews, and I'm here to make sure you're ready for them too. So make sure you watch this video series till the end because we will be diving deep into WebDriver IO with the latest version where I will be providing invaluable tips and tricks that will improve your skills as a test automation engineer. Now all the code from this series is available for you. Check out the link in the description below for that. Before we dive in, a quick note, this series is tailored for those who have worked with WebDriver IO in the past. If you're new or looking for a step-by-step -step guide, then head over to my academy, sdetunicorns.com where I've covered a comprehensive course on WebDriver IO just for beginners. Link will be in the description below for that as well. One last thing, if you want to support this channel, then please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel and share this video with your friends and colleagues. Thank you. So let's take a look at some of the things we will cover in this series. First off, we're going to begin with setting up our WebDriver IO project using the latest version, which is version 8.14, I believe. And then we're going to write our basic test. We're going to see how we can search content on Amazon, verify the search results. We'll also take a look at how to handle auto suggestions. And then we're going to go through the entire cart flow process. We're going to add item to the cart. We're going to update the cart quantity. We're going to verify that the price updated for that particular item and make sure we cover this full end to end scenario. So these are just some of the things you might come across when you'll be in an interview and they might ask you to go through some of these flows. And the interview will typically be, let's say, one hour, two hours, depending on how long the different scenarios they want you to go through. So that's what we're going to be covering in this video series. All right, so we'll kick things off by setting up WebDriver IO and writing down our very first test. Let's get started. So I have my terminal right over here, and I'm already into the folder where I want to create my project. So make sure you go into the folder where you want to create your WebDriver IO project. Now here, in order for us to create a new project, all we have to do is simply type in npm in it. WDIO, and then here we're going to add the path for a project. In my case, the path is going to be WebDriver IO dash Amazon. So within my existing folder, I'm saying over there, create a new folder called WebDriver IO Amazon and do all of the initialization in that particular project. So let's go ahead and hit enter and get started. So as you can see, it's going ahead and installing the WebDriver IO CLI to initialize the project. Now this CLI is the command line interface which will allow us to configure our WebDriver IO project. So once this is installed, then we'll be able to choose, pick and choose how we want to set up our WebDriver IO project. So there you go, our CLI has been successfully installed and it has pulled up a WebDriver IO configuration wizard. Now this is the one of the best parts with WebDriver IO. You can really customize it to the level you want. For example, in this case, it's asking, hey, what type of testing would you like to do? If you're not already familiar with WebDriver IO, you can do end-to-end -end testing, component or unit testing, desktop testing for, let's say, Electron apps, or desktop testing for macOS apps. So a lot more things you can cover with WebDriver IO. It's not just for web automation or, let's say, mobile automation. In our case, we are focusing on end-to-end -end testing, so I'm going to hit Enter here. Then again, where is your automation backend located? Am I using, let's say, some kind of cloud service? I'm running it on local. Do I have, let's say, some Selenium grid setup? Well, in our case, we're keeping it simple. I have it on my local machine, so I will hit enter here. Now, again, as I mentioned with end-to-end -end testing, you can do for web or you can do for mobile. So we are focusing on web, so we'll go with the default. Now, this is some of the new things you're going to see here with WebDriver IO latest versions. It will ask you which browser do you want to go with. So you can decide your browser, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and so on. We are focusing on Chrome, so we'll keep the basic one. And then the framework, you can go with Mocha, Jasmine, Cucumber. We'll go with Mocha. And then do you want to use a compiler? So you can use, let's say, a TypeScript, or you can use Babel for all the ES6 and above features. Again, we're going to keep it simple. I'll say no here. And then do you want WebDriver to auto-generate some test files? Let's go with no for now. We'll try to keep it, let's say, from scratch. And then we'll add up our files as we need based on some of the requirements that we will have on our Amazon project. So I'll say no here. The reporter, they have different reporter options. We'll keep the default spec reporter. We don't want any plugins. I'll hit enter. We don't want any service as well. Now here, back in the earlier versions, you would select something like a Chrome driver service because you're going with Chrome browser. But with the latest changes, WebDriver IO will take care of installing the driver, such as the Chrome for testing browser, as well as the Chrome driver binary. And we no longer need to use any third-party services for it. So here, we're not going to select anything. We'll keep it by default. 
Now the website, again, the website we are using in this case is going to be amazon.com. So I will add the base URL for that. So let me just copy that and paste it right here. There you go. So that's my base URL, amazon.com, and I will hit enter. And then it's asking me, hey, do I want to install the packages based on all the selections? Well, yes, of course, so I'm gonna select yes here. It's going ahead and installing three packages for us, the WebDriver IO local runner, the WebDriver IO mock-off framework, as well as the spec reporter. Perfect, so it has successfully set up our project into the desired folder path where I wanted it to be. Now in order for us to open this up, we'll open up in the favorite ID that you want to. In my case, I'm gonna go with BS code. You can open it up in ID, any ID that you want. So I already have a shortcut, I can just do code dot and it would pull it up in VS code. In your case, you can simply go to the Visual Studio code and open this up. And I just realized I need to first CD into my desired folder. So I'm just gonna do CD, WebDriver IO, Amazon. Now here I can open it up. So I'll just do code dot here once again. And there you go, our project has been successfully opened up right here. Now I'm not gonna go into too much details of what your package JSON is or what your WebDriver IO configuration is because my expectation is that you should already know how all of these things work and you should have some familiarity with WebDriver IO. Now keep in mind, in an interview, they might ask you, hey, what are some of these files? So you will have to explain what is contained in a package JSON or what is contained in your configuration file, why certain configuration is set up that way. Um, so again, all of these things I have covered in my course. If that's something you're interested in, I will add the link for that in the description below where I go a lot more in detail about all of these things. So I have pulled up amazon.com over here. So we're gonna set off with a very basic test. We will open up amazon.com, which is our main website. And then from there, I will simply make sure that the title contains amazon.com as well as the URL contain amazon.com or simply Amazon. So this is gonna be your base test. So we will go ahead and set this up and this will give you a good understanding of how to write a basic test, how to run the test, as well as how to write your assertions as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna head back to the S code. And here we're gonna go to our WebDriver IO configuration. We're gonna take a look at the specs path. So in the specs, there is no path right over here. So maybe I can just create, let's say a new folder, call this one specs. And within here, I can add in my first file and the file can be, uh, well, this is, let's call that home.e2v.js. Now here, I wanna say in my specs, the file path is gonna be specs forward slash star star forward slash star dot js. That means anything that is inside the specs folder with the js extension is gonna be my spec file. So that's good. Now here we are using mocha, so I'm gonna add in my describe and an it block, so let's do that. So that's my describe block. I can call this one, let's say the homepage or the Amazon homepage, whatever you wanna call it, doesn't matter. In your it block, we will access the URL We'll verify the URL and verify the title. So most likely, let's say when you're in an interview scenario, they would not ask you to set up your project. They would expect you to already have this prepared. Let's say any kind of framework that you wanna use in let's maybe you wanna go with the driver IO, maybe you wanna use Cypress or Playwright. Doesn't really matter, they don't care. All they wanna focus on is, can you really go ahead and automate a website? Unless they have a specific requirement where they want to hire an engineer with WebDriver IO skills or a Cypress skills or Playwright skills, then they will probably tell you to set up that thing. So they would expect you to already have everything set up and have something like this pulled up in an IDE of your choice. And then from there, they'll be like, all right, this is what I want you to do. Go to Amazon and then I want you to go ahead and the very first test you need to write is access the URL and then verify your URL or title. The idea behind this is they want to know whether you can actually go ahead and write a very basic test and they will keep increasing the skill level as you will be able to solve these things. And based on that, they might hire you from let's say a junior position or intermediate, senior architect. Totally depends how well you do in these kind of interview scenarios. Now this is one of the coding scenarios you might come across as SDT interview. Again, as I mentioned, I have done that in the past and have done it taken interviews as well, I've asked candidates to do the similar thing. So this is way better than me asking you to do some lead code questions because I feel like while there is value there as well, these are more practical and what you will do on a day-to-day -day basis. Anyways, moving on, let's go ahead and verify our URL and title and we will get started with right here. The very first thing we're gonna do is open up the URL. So in WebDriver IO, it all works with async await. So I'm gonna add in async here. I will add in await. And then we'll say browser dot URL, and then I'll just do forward slash. Now one bonus tip right here for you guys, 
If we just did browser.url, you can see the type is showing as any, same thing as the URL. That means, you know, I can just type anything in. Uh, there's no error being thrown over there, right? Like it's everything is considering it to be okay because it's not even recognizing the methods. So one thing you can do is if you're using JS files, you can just do import. And at the very top, you can just do browser and import it from the WebDriver IO globals. So they have different options here. So I can just do WDIO forward slash globals. All right. Now, if I hover over to browser, you can see that this is a WebDriver IO browser. It has that specific type added to it. Same thing from a URL, you will get a lot more information. It's going to say, hey, the URL takes in a path with a string. That means in this URL, it's going to take in a path with string. Now, it won't really like throw me an error if I still go ahead and do this, because for that case, you will have to use TypeScript where it will know exactly which method is supported by, let's say, the browser object. Um, in this case, it doesn't really know, but you will get a lot more information over here. And at the same time, if you just do dot here, you're going to see all the methods accessible as part of the um, browser object. So that's what you get um, with when using this kind of global WebDriver IO and you import that at the top. Now, this is optional. You don't have to do it. But if you do that, again, that's a bonus point. You will clearly show that you have a lot more knowledge about how the framework works and you're able to you know, add in some custom optimizations right on the spot. All right, so this will go ahead and open up our URL. The reason we did forward slash is because in our base URL, in our configuration, we already have the entire URL. And if you remember as part of our setup, I go right here and go to my configuration. You're gonna see in my base URL already have amazon.com. So I'm saying, hey, just go to the base URL by forward slash. If I wanna go to some page, let's say the contact page, this would be amazon.com forward slash contact. All right, let's remove this. Now, the next thing we'll do is verify our URL. So I can just do await. And here we can use the expect assertions. I'll do expect browser. Now we'll do dot to have URL containing. And I can say I want it to contain Amazon. Now, same thing as before, I can even import this at the top because if I hover over to this, this says any. So I can just import this at the top as well, expect. So this is again part of my globals. You can see here, expect webdriver io dot expect. All right, so I've added in my first assertion, which is verifying that the URL should contain Amazon. I can do the same thing, and I can just have, let's say, to have title containing same thing, Amazon. Now let's go ahead and try to run this test and make sure this successfully works. So to run the test in webdriver io, you're going to do npx wdio and then add in your, the configuration path, which is wdio.conf.js. And it will go ahead and automatically pick up the spec file based on what you have set up in your configuration. All right, so if you see on the right, we are doing get title and it seems to be working, but we have some test failures over here. And there you go. So our first assertion worked, we didn't get any error for there, but the second one failed because it's saying, hey, I was expecting Amazon to be in a capital letter, but basically the A should be in caps. But what you put in is actually in small letter. So that means we got to fix that. So we're going to do capital A, and that should be part of this entire thing. And even I can probably do, let's say, amazon.com here, and that should work. Now, this is good because right away we know our sessions are working because it actually failed. So now if we rerun this test, all of them should work successfully. And there you go. We just ran our test successfully, and it worked without any issues. Now, at this point, you have, if you're able to do this much, it's going to tell the interviewer that, hey, you clearly understand how to write a test. You're able to do some, let's say, the optimizations by importing browser and expect from WDIO globals. You know how assertions work. Now, depending on the interviewer, they might allow you to, let's say, refer the documentation, or they might say, no, you have to do it on your own. Personally, I feel like there's nothing wrong with looking at the documentation. It's there for a reason. So if you want to take a look at the documentation to understand how to do a particular access, a particular command in WebDriver IO, I think that's, you should be allowed to do that. But at the same time, let's say if I'm interviewing you and I said, yeah, documentation you're allowed to see. What I would want to see is whether you're able to search for the right thing in the documentation or not, or are you literally searching for how to write tests in WebDriver IO? Because this will show the difference between how much do you really know? Like in this case, you know that let's say you want to add in the assertion for URL containing. That means are you searching for URL containing or are you searching for how do I verify how I can access URL or maybe let's say Googling that on, um, I don't know, on Google trying to figure out how to do all of these things. 
this shows the difference between how much you know about the framework so that's what i will be looking for when i'm interviewing you like are you able to first of all do it without even looking at the documentation for example just the way just i did um and if you're able to do that then clearly you are you know what you're doing and you have really amazing skills and you have worked with this framework a lot of amount of time but again there will be scenarios where they will say access i don't know shadow dom iframe or something and you probably won't know the exact syntax so for that it's totally okay to look at the documentation and make sure you know the right way to search for the documentation and we'll cover that in the later parts of the video anyway so now we have come to the point where we have successfully written our first test we were able to write our test so we are moving along really well in the next video we're going to go ahead and do some additional test where the interviewer will ask us to add in some test that is going to be a little bit more on the advanced side and we will keep stepping up the game as we move on now as i mentioned if you want to access this code it will be available using the link in the description below so make sure you go ahead and access that enter in your email address and you will get a link to the doc uh, the entire code that we're going to be covering in this entire series and if there are a few things in this video that you really didn't get properly so for that make sure guys to check out my course which is webdriver io complete beginner course and i've added it in my academy as at unicorns.com there i totally take you step by step on how all of this thing works how async await works why we use describe it block and all all of the different assertion methods as well so you're going to learn all of those things step by step and i'll add the link for that in the description below for you guys as well so that's it if you enjoyed this video please make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already that's all for now i will see you in the next one